past year at CloudBees, we have been using um, a continuous deployment for one of our services. Um, we've had about 350 deployments um, uh, from our three to four person team, and I thought it would be a good time to review what worked and what went wrong. Um, the service that uh, we're dealing with is DevOptics for Only Insights. It's part of our DevOptics service. It provides uh, reporting analytics on uh, the various different um, uh, runs that your Jenkins server provides. Um, we use a microservice uh, architecture where we've got dedicated data stores for each service. And we use blue-green deployment um, for, as part of this. Um, the reason we chose for blue-green deployment is when you're doing continuous deployment, you don't know when um, uh, you're going to end up having a deployment take place. And so therefore you need to be able to have continuously, uh, re re customers continuously served responses. As part of going with continuous deployment, you also therefore need to have some form of schema migration, which is in part why we have dedicated data stores. So our PostgreSQL is managed by Flyway DB. Um, our Elasticsearch schema is managed using some custom code. We, so we have Postgres for transactional data and Elasticsearch for um, the uh, non-transactional data. And then we have Redis used to cache um, data, which is computationally expensive. And for those, we use version keys so that if the new version queries, it will have a cache miss and it will recompute. Whereas if the uh, old version queries, it has the catch hit and it saves the computation. Um, the other thing that we do is we make sure that we only ever roll forward. Uh, we never roll back. If you roll back, you'd have to do a database restore uh, to get the old schema. And therefore, um, you'd have downtime if you did that. Um, every build is deployed from the master branch. So We've chosen that when you merge the master, that's it, it's gonna end up in production. Before it ends in production, we ver verify it on integration and staging, and we use blue-green deployments for all environments, and we do load tests for all those environments. And when we have a test failure, what we'll do is we'll reset that environment back to blue. So if, if we've gone, we've verified on integration, and then we hit the staging environment where we have more data, and let's say, in that staging environment, we have some data that's causing the tests to fail. Um, in that particular scenario, we reset the staging environment back to blue. We don't proceed with the deployment, but the integration environment will stay on the new version because we've already got rid of the old version and we can't roll back. Um, and then because we're doing that every build on master, we do feature development using pull requests. So what worked? Well, the blue-green deployment has been absolutely wonderful. You've had no on-plan downtime. Now, that's not to say we haven't had downtime. There have been some cases where the ops team have needed to make infrastructure changes. And as a result of that, we had to have some planned downtime, but uh, the actual continuous deployment has not resulted in downtime. The blue and green has meant that uh, where there have been problems, we've still been serving traffic through the blue version. Um, the Biggest change, I would say, of what works well has been the continuous deployment culture. Um, prior to using continuous deployment, we'd always try to be good and write tests, but pressure comes along and you can end up making excuses for yourself and they may not be your best tests if you've got some tests, but um, the tests haven't always been as good as we'd like. Um, when you have continuous deployment, the fact that when you merge the PR, the only thing stopping broken code is your tests. And that means we write tests always. And you need to be very aggressive at eliminating the flaky tests because they're going to stop deployments for no reason and they're gonna be a pain uh, as they randomly stop a deployment. So we eliminate the flaky tests, but the positive of this is that deployment has become a non-event. We don't talk about when will we deploy, is it okay to deploy, can we deploy to production now or anything like that. We just merge the pull request and forget about it. Um, we don't tend to merge late on a Friday, but you know that doesn't mean we, we're doing that out of fear. It's just we, we don't want to have to worry about what will be the case when we come in 
uh, on Monday and trying to remember what it was we were doing. It's not that we couldn't merge on the late Friday afternoon. Um, the acceptance tests that we have stop broken deployments. So uh, halfway down this build uh, list of builds, you can see there's a yellow line. That's where we had acceptance tests that actually caught um, the failure during the release process and, and prevented it going any further. Um, so that was uh, something that's really good to actually see it in case it gives us a lot more confidence on our deployment, knowing that we can merge where the PR has said the PR verification is fine, but even still then we can end up catching things because we've got additional testing that kicks in when we're actually able to start testing against the production and production-like environments. Um, now, the bit everyone's really watching this video for, what went wrong? Um, so we have a nice library, utility library in terms of Postgres with uh, Flyway DB that handles our schema migration. There wasn't anything uh, that we could identify for Elasticsearch. And then given the kind of way we're storing our data, it, it was just too tempting to write our own schema migration code. Um, the code we wrote ended up the first version was like a 500 or 600 line mega function. Um, we put tests in, like we're, we're, we're being responsible. We tested cases that covered all the different potentialities with the various different branch points covered and we had good test coverage. What we failed to realize was that there was a timing logic bug that would only strike when there was a lot of data and our tests were not putting in the mega lot of data because it would literally take a lot of time to load all that data in in order to run the tests and these tests will be running all the time and the result of that was when we had our first um schema migration after go live um the green nodes failed to complete schema validation so when when a node starts up the first thing it does is it checks the schema to make sure that it's compatible with the code that the node is going to run so that it doesn't get crazy bugs. And if the schema isn't compatible, it will sit there and wait for an appropriate node to complete schema migration. Um, so all the green nodes were failing to start because they didn't have a schema they were compatible with. Um, and this was in production. So what we ended up having to do was we had to go and refactor that function into loads of little composition of smaller testable functions. When we broke it up, we were able to actually identify what was the actual bug. We were able to then fix the bug and we were then able to deploy that into production and fix things. We did, as part of that, also institute this policy in our pull requests that when we have schema migrations that are mutating data of this particular kind, we're going to validate them against a dump, an anonymized dump of the production data set before we finish the pull request review. And we also have periodic synchronizations of data into the staging environment that allows us to make sure that we wouldn't even get as far as production before we'd catch that again. So that was one uh, thing that we went, went wrong and that we learned from. Um, another thing that bit us was poor test coverage. Um, so there were one or two features where while we were developing them, so we tend to develop the back end first, then we merge that into production, and then we tell the front end team, here you go, the new APIs are ready, um, uh, and you can start using them. So we had one or two cases where we had a smoke test, say, for a specific endpoint, but we hadn't actually battle tested all the various different combinations of, argue, are, of options that could go into that. And when the UI team started trying to integrate uh, with that endpoint, they hit bugs because we had a test in a uh, test gap. Um, so we didn't break the whole service because none of this was something that was user facing. It was just endpoints that we'd exposed to allow the front end team to work. But uh, so that was good. But uh, what it did do was it reinforced for us that we need to write the tests always and we can't skimp on writing tests. Um, so that's basically it. That's a summary of where we've been for the past year with continuous deployment. Um, I like it. Uh, the rest of the team seem to like it. Um, and thank you very much.